Do you ever wonder whether your trade, the trade you're in, actually has a statistical edge? I mean, you think it will work. You might even be confident it will work, but you wish you actually knew the stats behind a trade. And if you had them, you could trade so much better. Well, in this video, we'll share how you can start doing this with your trading. Hi, I'm Mike Bellafieri, co-founder of SMB Capital. We're a proprietary trading firm located in New York City and the author of the trading classic One Good Trade and the playbook. Founded in 2005, SMB Capital trades stocks and options and futures and crypto both as discretionary and automated traders. In this video, a promising developing trader at the firm shares how he used three back tests in three trades to make better discretionary trades. Let's get to work on sharing this important trading lesson so you can start trading with more confidence. So this playbook is um, the search for unique edge historical data. So this playbook consists of a series of trades I took on the week of January 31st to February 4th, um, specifically using backtesting to generate a thesis and take a trade. Yeah, so the idea here is, so at our firm, we, we've got some really talented discretionary traders. So if you put market data in front of them and you get them in the right stocks, they're going to do very well. What if, and now we also have, and, and, and internally at the firm, we have front end technology for execution, and then we also have proprietary technology for back testing and from, for automated trading. Technology is a big part of what we do here at the firm. So, you know, we've developed this stable of really talented discretionary traders, and then we also have other traders who know how to back test and use technology really well. Let's give di discretionary traders even more of an edge. And, and the thesis is if you can get some back tested data in front of really good discretionary traders, or the thesis is if you can learn how to back test and then become a really good discretionary trader, and you can put those two things together. That's way better than you just being a, a, a very a consistently profitable discretionary trader. That's way better than that. And, and you can find ways to trade better as a discretionary trader by using some of these back tests. You can increase your confidence to take certain trades by finding a, 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 a trade as a discretionary trader and then also having some back testing to support it. Um, and then also spot trades, right? So, you know, you interesting, you, 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 you said this uh, well, which is, you know, sometimes back tests help you to develop a, a thesis and then you can use your discretionary trading skills to support that thesis. So it doesn't have to be, uh, the, it doesn't have to be the other way around. And so, so that's the idea here. And I think sometimes people just do back tests and rely on back tests and get frustrated. And I think sometimes people are trading with discretion and they run into uh, capacity or they run into uh, areas where they're not growing anymore or they, they run into friction where they, can, they want to trade with more confidence, they want to trade better, they want to trade bigger, they want to trade more consistently. And so this can be a, a way to help them to do that. So let's go through an example of, ha of how we might do this. Okay, great. So the criteria for this would be to find a stock that is shown or is showing abnormal price action, um, then backtest the data to see if there's any statistical edge to trade over an intraday or multi-day basis. This price action can be large pre-market gaps, abnormal price action the previous day, or abnormal pre performance over the past few days to few weeks. So as far as the setup criteria goes, I wanna look for areas where buyers or sellers have previously been in control. Look for technical confirmation from the tape, volume, and price action that buyers or sellers are still in control at those levels. These signals include depreciating volume once testing that area, which can signal exhaustion from the other side. A heavy tape, large buyers or sellers 
on the tape, large transactions hitting the bid or ask, and a change of character in price action. So for example, a higher low after a series of lower highs. Um, so look for other signals such as names and sympathy, sector ETFs. If trading an ETF, pay attention to how its largest holdings are trading. And if trading a market name, pay attention to TIC, TIC-Q, and ADD, as those can all give you an edge. Um, and then lastly, size up on the more significant back-tested ideas and the ones that historically worked better for you. If you want to learn three more real-world setups that our traders use, including the simple setup that we teach all of our new traders, and the setup that turned one of our traders into a seven-figure big money earner, check out the free webinar that we're currently running. Just go ahead and click the link that should be appearing now at the top right-hand corner of your screen. That will open up the free registration page in a new window, so don't worry, you won't lose this video. You can also visit tradingworkshop.com to register for this free intensive workshop. You're gonna learn more in a couple of hours from this trading workshop than from years of online education. So backtesting. So backtesting is a method of seeing how well a set criteria or strategy has performed over a previous period of time. With backtesting, the theory is that if a criteria played out with a directional edge over a set period of time, it can continue to display that edge. So for example, from backtesting, if we discover that over the past five years, on average, SPY closes the day up 1.5% higher from where it opens and closes green 85% of the time on instances, it opens the day down more than negative 3%. We can assume that more often than not, in the future, SPY will close the day higher relative to its open on a gap down more than negative 3%. This will give us an upside edge, but it is not enough to just have an edge. You need to trade that edge alongside a setup you trade well that offers a favorable risk to reward. As Dr. S says, it is not enough to have an edge over the next day or week. It is necessary to execute that edge in such a way to exploit supply or demand dynamics during the day. To get a favorable risk to reward, you must fight for price. It is not enough to see your setup and hit into the trade. Being patient and nimble with your execution will increase your risk to reward over time. Another great quote from Dr. S is, to get the good trade with the solid edge, you have to let many lesser trade opportunities pass you by. The idea after all is not to trade, the idea is to make money. As an example, you know, the day of the big bounce at the end of February, you sent a a statistical study to myself and to Shark and to Dr. Steenbarger and it said something like if the market had closed down the prior day, you can correct me if, if I, my memory is failing me, if the market closed down over 2% the prior day and then gapped down over 3% the next day, that there were 13 instances where this occurred, 11 of those times the market ended up higher than the open and it actually closed up over two percent on those days that was that was exactly the results and and yeah so that was definitely an example of a significant edge um, to the upside approaching that day so you walk into the day with that back test you know on a day we had the biggest bounce the you don't just you, you, you want to find, you want to pick your spots. So you've got that study, and then as you're saying, you want to overlay a setup that is in your playbook where you also have edge, and you want to put the two of those together because you're not sure, you always have to trade with guardrails, and you're not sure when the market is going to start to go up. You know, it could, it could go down a percent before it goes up another 3%. You, it could go down 2%, you could get stopped out before it goes up another 5%. So you, you've got to also make sure your entries are particular, or uh, you could give back a lot of open profit in the particular idea. So you, you've got to trade this as well. You've got to have some good trading skills that you're, you're implementing with this, this, these effective back tests. And not every back test is the same. The one that you sent us before the big bounce was a great back test that had a lot of edge. Yeah, that's, um, that's a great point. Sometimes you can be more open um, and maybe a bit more aggressive to the back test with more significant edge than the ones with lesser edge. Um, so yeah, adapting and, and taking every back test with an open mind and approaching them differently is important. Yeah, and you send us a bunch of back tests and you know, there are some I'll look at and be like, yeah, you know, that's interesting, but that's not gonna be particularly helpful. And then, you know, there are back tests like you sent 
the day of the big bounce, and I was like, whoa, that, whoa, I don't see, I don't see many studies like this. This, you know, we were thinking that this was ready to bounce, and now we actually have data suggesting that our thought process is confirmed by statistics, and then we overlay our, our discretionary trading skills and, and we get some real edge. And that was by far the best day that we had last month, by far. So just um, some more points to make. So when backtesting, you need to find a sweet spot of getting enough data while still getting closely related data. So for example, if Snap opens the day up on a 60% gap up and its previous highest gap up is 20%, I would say even though you do have large gap ups, you don't have close enough data to support the behaviors of Snap on that day. So if you do decide to take the trade, you have to keep that in mind and you have to recognize that and potentially size down on the trade. It is also important not to get tied down to a trade idea just because you have statistical data to back up your thesis. Just because you have data doesn't mean the stock has to trade a certain way. To combat this, I give myself a max of three attempts on a core position for these statistical back tests. That also forces me to be more selective with my entries. Yeah, and a good example of this is the, the back test you sent before the big bounce day. So yeah. 11 out of 13 times, the market has, has closed up over 2%. I think it was 2.8%. Uh, on average, yep. and from from the opening print to the close, that's happened 11, 11 out of 13 times. But you want to ask yourself, well, how many of the 13 times does this back test include the start of a war? Exactly. And I remember we were talking about that too, I think. You want to use your, your reasoning skills when you're using this data and if it's not working you can't be wedded to it this is just another huge variable that can really give you some more edge but you got to use it the right way so um this is the big picture so the price action that we saw this week um we saw a few um trending higher days going into the beginning of the week um close higher three days and we did stall out and then we did close lower and gap down on um, the last day so the context um, for this first back test that I'm going to show is Snap. So Snap was gapping down about 20% in reaction to Facebook's earnings. I back tested instances over the past five years in which Snap opened the day down more than negative 10%. There was an edge to the short side. So what I wrote out was there have been nine instances over the past five years, six of those nine instances, so 66.67% of the time, closed lower from where it opens with an average intraday change of negative 1.85%. It has an average upside ATR of 0.76 and an average downside ATR of negative 0.75. Um, and this is the data right here. And then this um, was the intraday chart um, for the day. So you can see Snap it opened up the day. It put in a high at 26.50. It traded to the pre-market lows and then gave an opportunity to get short once it traded about five cents below high of day, um, then it got below VWAP and then really trended lower for um, most of the day. When it gets below VWAP, that can be a pattern in your playbook. And then you can say to yourself, hey, I've got this back test in my back pocket and let me lean on that. Let me lean on this pattern a little with a little bit more confidence because the back test is on my side. Exactly. So. So the plan for, for this trade was to get short at a level where buyers will start to get exhausted and sellers are present. After there was clear supply around high of day, I wanted to get short above 26.35, risking 26.50, which was high of day, if there was technical confirmation. So I got short at 26.40, risking 26.50, once I saw a very heavy, heavy tape near high of day and an aggressive seller that continued to step in and hit the bid. Um, we then had a rejection, hard rejection, down to VWAP, um, and we did see a little bit of buying coming in at VWAP. This is the first sign of buy buying and I covered 20% there. Um, we then got below VWAP and, was, and we're stalling out below. Um, and then once we did break below there, I covered in 10% increments when strength came in on the tape. Um, and then we did have this consolidation period with a large buyer holding up price at 25.40. And then the large buyer got decremented. So I added more size, um, risking 25.50. And we had an aggressive breakdown, which I covered 10% into on the wick lower, but price immediately reclaimed and took out 25.50. Um, and I got flat the rest of the position because of that. Look, we're making an intraday trade there. That, that is for that day. And this study is for that day. We should know the very next day, Snap had earnings after the close and the stock was up a ton. 
So we're making, we're, we're not making a swing trade here. We're, we're not making a weekly trade. We're, we're, we're making an intraday trade. This is intraday back test using intraday patterns. And we're closing this out uh, intraday. Exactly. And when I do run my back test, I do also test it over the next three, five and then day, 10 day period. And if there is a significant edge there, then I may look to set up for a different type of trade. But this edge only was intraday. So um, this next example is on um, the queues. So the context was QQQ closed the day above 3% on below average 30 day volume, all after closing the previous day above 3%. After back testing this criteria, there was an edge to the short side. So this has occurred zero times over the past five years. However, over the past five years, there have been six occurrences of QQQ closing above 3% on below average 30 day volume after closing the previous day green. The following day, we see a red close from opening price 80% of the time with an average intraday change of negative 0.78% um, and an average downside ATR of negative 0.36. Since 1999, however, we have seen five occurrences of the queues closing above 3% on below average 30 day volume after closing the previous day above 3%. These instances occurred in 2000, 2001, 2002, and 2008. The following day, we see a red close from opening price 80% of the time with an average intraday change of negative 1.27% and an average downside ATR of negative 0.49. And this was the intraday technicals um, for the queues. So it had um, some pre-market resistance coming in at 62.63. It had this consolidation that it broke down off the open. It was holding below VWAP, um, and then it did get back above later in the morning. And we did test this level, the 62.27 level, which was the level I was watching for a potential short. Um, pulled back to VWAP, but it really couldn't hold below. And then we rallied into the close. Um, and then this is the trade execution. So I executed on TQQQ. So the plan was to get short if sellers were present near high of day. I was looking to get short above 62, risking 62.50 if there was technical confirmation. I got short at an average price of 62.20. I was risking 30 cents once volume was stalling out, price action was stalling out, and we were getting consistently lower ticks on TQ and ADD was rolling over. I covered 10% on the aggressive flush down. Um, and then I covered another 10% once buyers started stepping in on the tape. So um, I added size on the pop when sellers were present at 62. I covered once offers lifted, but added back size as it immediately stuffed there. I covered 20% once buyers once again stepped in at 61.40. And then I covered the rest at VWAP once price was stalling out and clear change of character on the tape. Buyers were not only present, but consistently hitting the ask. And over here, this is just a look at TQ and ADD. Um, this little highlighted bubble here, this shows you ADD at the time of me taking the trade and it was rolling over. Um, so that was a bit of a confirmation that I saw there and TQs were consistently putting in um, lower lows and lower highs here while um, TQQQ was stalling out at the highs. So this third and last back test that example that I thought I would show was on AMD. So AMD was gapping up about 11% after reporting positive earnings. I back-tested instances over the past five years that AMD opened the day up more than 5%. There was an edge to the long side. So over the past five years, there have been 14 instances of AMD opening the day up over 5%. Of those 14 instances, 10 of the times it closed higher from where it opened, which was 71.43% of the time with an average intraday change of 3.29%. Of those 14 instances, AMD puts in an average upside ATR of 1.15 and an average downside ATR of negative 0.49 on the day. And this was the price action on AMD. So this is also a good example to show you how you may have to trade around an edge, um, especially if it's not present off the open and if it's not working and how you have to stay nimble and really either leave it alone or truly wait for confirmation if um, price action is going against you because at the end of the day, you can have as much edge, statistical edge if you want, but price action is king and that's what's going to decide the trade. So here's uh, the trade execution on AMD. So the plan was to wait for AMD to show a clear change of character from the selling pressure it was experiencing and hit in on the higher low. So after AMD saw strong buying off of 120.60, it put in a few higher lows. I wanted to be more patient with this one and not hit in right away due to how much selling pressure it was experiencing intraday. I ended up hitting into the second higher low with buyers hitting the ask, 
which was a clear change of character and price action in the tape, got long with an average price of 122.30, risking 122. I took off 20% into 123.30 as I was one point in the money and was up a little over 3R. I wanted to lock in some profits and make the trade risk free. I then got flat once AMD started showing weakness at 124, which was intraday resistance in queues. Um, we're starting to roll over. In hindsight, keeping on 25% for a test of VWAP would have been a better trade decision in my opinion. Combining back-tested ideas with intraday setups that I trade well works really well for me. If you get creative, you can find some really unique and interesting edges on a day-to-day -day basis. I would like to expand my back-testing ideas by back-testing specific setups with, with intraday data rather than just finding a long or short edge. I would like to back-test specific setups I trade best. This would be mean reversion trades at certain levels, consolidations above and below VWAP, and how stocks react when retracing to VWAP. I have also been working on a few option strategies that I will continue to work on. Lastly, I would like to continue to collaborate with others on backtesting setups and ideas. All right, great. Look forward to seeing that. And uh, I'll shoot you an email about some guys at the firm that, that I'd love to see you collaborating more with. Of course, uh, I would love that, thank you. Hey, go ahead and click our subscribe button so you don't miss any of the videos they're producing for you in the trading community. And please take the time to add your feedback in the comment section for what videos you'd like for us to produce next and what you found helpful from this video from all of us at SMB. Train and trade well.